Hello, I'm just going to be doing my get ready with me. I have a whole bunch of new makeup. I just can't keep up with how much new makeup I keep getting from all these subscription boxes. And I'm just going to start doing get ready with me is where I test out the new makeup and kind of introduce you to my thoughts and feelings about the new makeup that I get. That way I can chit chat about what's going on in my life, things I've been thinking about, my opinions on things. And so let's get started! I have a whole bunch of new palettes that I haven't even tried yet. Just got one today. I got this City Limits palette by IBY and it has this Fire and Ice eyeshadow in it, which in my Ipsy for either this month or last month, I got the Fire and Ice eyeshadow too and it was just a single so I ended up giving that to my neighbor and because I'm not gonna have all this makeup I'm not gonna go through it all you know and I just got this Midnight Masquerade palette which I'm really excited to try out I think that's what I'm gonna try out first I got this in a boxy charm so let's try out this Midnight Masquerade and I might use a little bit of the City Limits too. Tonight I'm sipping on McDonald's Sweet Tea. I went there for dinner. I've been going to there for dinner a lot lately actually. But I'm still managing to lose weight, surprisingly. I've been going there a lot lately because of the Halloween contest thing that they're having. So like, I go there and I win free food and I win points and... I want to go back and win more free food. But surprisingly, I've lost 12 pounds in the past month. So it's obviously not affecting me to go eat at McDonald's. Probably because I don't eat that much when I'm there. I just eat one meal. And since I'm so tall, I can consume a lot of calories in a day. So part of the reason why I've been losing such so much weight so rapidly is not only have I been working out more frequently, but I'm decreasing my mood stabilizer that made me gain so much weight. So I'm going to eventually go off that. My psychiatrist thinks that I might not need one. She says if I do need one, she'll put me on a different one that's not known to cause weight gain. Because that's what happens to me all the time. Like I get stabilized on a good medicine, I lose a bunch of weight and then I go crazy and then they put me on a medication that makes me gain a bunch of weight and then I have to lose the weight again and I'm getting kind of sick of it. I really hope the future psych meds will get better and not very many of them will cause weight gain. I think they are. So my sister had her DNA tested and she just got the results and I found out that on my father's side, I am part black and part East Indian. <laughs> I did not anticipate that at all. Well, I kind of had a feeling about East Indian, but I didn't, I didn't expect black at all. Like, I mean, we're all African, but I didn't expect recent African ancestors. So I am a total mutt, mostly European. I'm mostly Dutch. English, Irish, and German and French. I'm just everything. <laughs> the only thing I don't have in me that I know about is Pacific Islander. And apparently no Mexican. But I get my DNA test results soon. And I'll try and film a video about that where I say it all my... DNA test results. Hear the raccoons fighting outside? <laughs> they're noisy tonight. Wow, I wonder what they're fighting over. The raccoons are so cute. We got this family of raccoons that come by and they nibble on the cat food. It's so cute. Okay, I got these new makeup wipes. They're Elite Skincare Essentials with Collagen Extracts. 
and I got these at Ross and I'm just gonna wipe my face quick with them. So the main topic I want to discuss tonight is fat humor okay because I made a fat joke online and I didn't have like any ill intent with it because I'm fat and I think fat jokes are funny sometimes not all the time like they can get cruel but I wasn't trying to be joke wasn't trying to be cruel about it I was just joking what I said was okay there's this video of this um, fat girl doing a nightmare before Christmas Sally makeup and I said <laughs> the nightmare is she ate all the Christmas candy and I thought that was funny a lot of other people thought it was funny but I got attacked by a lot of women for it and um, they were saying oh I'm insecure and they're calling it saying pot called the kettle black and they're saying some really nasty stuff to me and uh, I was just making a fat joke you know and like if s fat comedians can do it why can't I do it you know it's just like fat jokes are funny that's why fat comedians have a career as long as they're done tastefully where you're not like calling somebody a beach whale or you know things like that or calling somebody a cow or something like that then fat jokes can be funny um in my opinion I want to know do you think fat jokes can be funny or do you think that nobody should ever say a fat joke and we should just censor it you know I mean our society is getting so PC you can't joke about anything I can understand some jokes but a fat joke really like sure there are people that struggle with weight because of like genetics and medications like my main struggle with weight is because of medications I've always been kind of heavier set I've got a large frame you know with how much people made fun of me for how big I was as a kid they would call me like the beast and stuff and I'm just so used to it now that I can find humor in it you know it doesn't hurt me anymore what hurts me is when people are cruel about it you know I can joke about um, when I binge eat or whatnot but it's not nice when women on the internet and this is another thing I want to talk about it's not nice when women on the internet attack other women and they all gang up on them and just fling insults at them and I see this a lot in the beauty community like women like get this herd mentality and they all attack this one person who barely did anything wrong like oh maybe they said something that was mildly offensive but they didn't intend for it to be offensive and they just jump in and attack them and that is awful women need to stop doing that it's awful if women want to be respected then they need to stop treating other women that way because because when men look at that and I'm not saying that men when men look at that they see how vicious women can be and then when when other women look at that I don't I don't know like I've never seen when I look at that personally when I see other women do that I just think that's evil that's a very evil thing to do I can't even recall ever doing that to somebody online and I don't see why anybody would do that I want to know what's your perspective I'm sure you've all seen it I'm sure you've all seen it where women gang up on a bunch of a bunch of women gang up on one woman it's usually a woman I've never seen it happen with a man on the internet and say a bunch of cruel things to them it's it doesn't really hurt my feelings because like 
I'm so used to it like women are like that so on the internet I don't know it doesn't really happen too much in public it happened a lot in high school but not too much in public it's a very high school immature thing to do but uh, it's just sickening and not all women are like that like there's always that this few gentle women that are like hey you guys you need to stop being so mean but then those women usually get shut down for sticking up for someone and men tell me does this happen to you too um, I'm sure it happens a lot and I don't know I feel like it might happen a lot in the gay community but I don't know are gay men like that answer me <laughs> I don't think I don't think um, straight men tend to be like that because I've never noticed that behavior in straight men okay so I'm going in Oh wait, I need to do concealer first. I always forget concealer. And I forgot primer. I'm just so worked up over that. Women need to seriously stop that. Where do they learn that behavior? Like, where is it learned from? Gotta be something they learn in school from other children. If you're a mother, teach your kid be nice. I don't know, a kid doesn't always do what it learns, but people would always make fun of me for how big I was because, you know, as a big kid, I was 13 pounds when I was born, so of course I was a big kid. I was bigger than all the other kids, and they'd make fun of me for how big I was, and <laughs> of course when they make fun of you for how big you are, you use that as... A weapon is like I'll show you and I'll beat you up because you're making fun of me because how big I was so I was a bully I was a bully but I was a bully because other people were bullying me I usually didn't beat anybody up unless they were making fun of me and then I would beat them up <laughs> okay now I need to go in with concealer there was a kid that tried to kiss me on the soccer field and <laughs> I punched him <laughs> I remember that. That was funny. I didn't want to be kissed by him. Okay, this is my Bella Pierre color corrector, and I'm going in with the orange. I mean, people really need to stop taking everything so seriously. And sure, there are people that are cruel to fat people, and those people need to be called out for. I don't think my joke was cruel. I It was just a joke. I did not intend for it to be cruel. There's plenty of people out there that are cruel. And they don't know they're being cruel. They, a lot of people don't know they're being cruel. And maybe, maybe I was being cruel, and but I sure didn't know I was being cruel. Okay, now I'm going in with my Manic Panic and Lily White. But I think you can't just assume everybody's trying to be mean. I always try and look at the good in people. Not everybody's out to get you. Most people don't give two fucks about you, you know, unless you're their, their friend, that most people don't care about you. They got their own lives to live. Now, there's something I want to talk about. Uh, there's another YouTuber here. I actually really adore her. I think she's adorable, but she made a video uh, like a month ago or something about Tess Holiday, and her opinion was that Tess Holiday shouldn't have been on the cover of, what was it? She was on the cover of, like, Teen Vogue, or I don't know what she was on the cover of, but she was on the cover of some magazine. And regardless if you like Tess Holiday's personality, what she does or what she's about, you should not say that a fat person shouldn't be on the cover of a magazine because she's fat. Like, you never know. Like, maybe this fat person goes out, works out at the gym every day, eats a healthy diet, and maybe they're on medication, or maybe they have a genetic disorder that makes them fat. And just because they're on the cover of the magazine 
doesn't mean they're going to make all these girls say like, oh, I want to be fat now. No, it's not setting a bad example to have a fat person on a magazine. I'm not saying it sets a good example, but it's just an example of a different body type. It shows that not everybody looks the same. I know I'm not really offended by Tess Holiday being on the magazine. Do I like Tess Holiday? I don't know. I don't know her personally. I've heard pretty bad things about her. So I kind of have a um, wary, skeptical opinion about her. But um, as far as her being on a magazine cover, I'm okay with that. Because I don't know her life. I don't know why she's overweight. I don't know if she, you know. What the hell is that noise? Coyotes. You hear the coyotes? I hope the cats will be okay. We got a couple stray cats that stay outdoors. Wait, no, I think that's an owl. I can't tell if that's owls or coyotes. Can you hear it? Creepy. The noise of an October night. I'm pretty sure the cats can defend themselves from coyotes if they're out there. I always bring my cat in, but I bring the stray cats in because then I would have a house full of cats and they'd all be fighting. Okay, that was Almay Wake Up Liquid Foundation in Buff and I'm almost out of this powder. I'm trying to empty it. I can't take the cap off, so it's really hard to get enough out. My Revlon powder that I've been using in my project pan, which I seriously need to update on the project pan. Hopefully I get around to that. I will definitely get around to that in November because that will be when I end my project pan. I started my project pan last November. Yoshi! There she is! Hear those coyotes? Are those coyotes or owls? You tell me. Even if those were owls, if they were a great horned owl, they could easily eat my cat. And I don't want that to happen. No eating of the cat. That's why she's not up loud outside at night during the winter time. Because the animals are hungry in the winter time. So since I'm having a hard time like keeping up with videos, I've made a list of like different videos I wanted to film. I haven't really committed to it because I'm so busy all the time. Like I only have a few available days out of the week and those available days I usually spend cleaning or relaxing because I'm so busy the rest of the time. I'm just wondering when I do get a chance to film what is it you're really interested in watching? Like what are your favorite types of videos? What do you want to see from me? And that will give me a better idea of what I need to focus my time filming because not all of you get these subscription boxes. Maybe you're not all interested in seeing these boxes be unboxed every and I can always like test out those products and show them to you later and be like, oh, I got it from this box. 
so if you're interested you can sign up for this box but um, if you want to see what I get in those boxes you can always check out my Instagram like I post pictures of the boxes when I get them but I want to know what you are interested in me filming um, so I can have better content what do you like to watch one of my favorite things to watch is declutter videos I love watching declutter videos and I love watching DIY organization videos which I could definitely do some of those because I'm into DIY organization I do that a lot and I declutter at least twice a year if not more and then I do little small little declutters every once in a while but at least twice a year I do a big declutter wow my brows are so out of whack tonight <laughs> This one's like up here and this one's like down here. <laughs> oh, I want to use this new cream eyeshadow I got. This is by Mirabella. And I think it's in the shade Visionary or Imagine. And I got this in my Yes Oh Yas box. And let's just put this on the lid. It's so beautiful and sparkly. I already swatched this on my hand. I'm just going to use my fingertip. Could use a brush. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's so beautiful. I wonder if this will make a good base. Because, like, I'm hoping that sparkle will shine through and really make a layer of iridescence. I want the lid to be very glittery. Now I don't know if other if there are variations and other people got different colors but I'm so happy with this color. This color is everything. It's just so beautiful. And you know what would look good over top of this? I'm not going to do it right now but I have I think it's called Space Cowboy by Urban Decay. I think that would look lovely over top of this. Uh, let's just do it anyways. I'm gonna do it anyways. I'll put it on, just do layers, cake on the eyelids. And I bet this would make a great highlight on the cheek too. Ooh, this is just one of those magical cream products. Yes, here's my Urban Decay Space Cowboy. And I'm just gonna use my finger once again. I find that uh, this eyeshadow works best when you use your finger. And I'm just gonna pat that on the lid. Look at all that sparkle. That is just gorgeous. I hope that really shines through whatever eyeshadow I decide to put on top of it. And put a little on the brow bone too. All sorts of noises going on outside tonight. I'm surprised that it's actually warm enough outside that I can leave my window open. It's been really cold the past few days. I think this eyeshadow, like just simply this all over the lid with a black wing would be gorgeous just for a classy look but I'm gonna vamp it up a little more because I want to test out these new eyeshadows. How about using the mask off in this pure palette? First though I'm going to go in the crease the Vintage Cosmetics Company Step 2 which is this angled fluffy brush and I'm going to go into sneak peek in the pure palette 
and just lightly tap that around the crease. That's very dark and pigmented. And I'm gonna use kind of swirly motions. So I'm not like a registered makeup artist or anything, but I have been doing makeup for a very long time. So I've learned some things. But I would really like to do more research. I need like a good makeup book or something so I can do more research and learn better techniques like what works best for like hooded eyes. I have hooded eyes. I think I have hooded eyes at least. And what works best for different facial structures. I think I have a general idea, but I'm not sure what general ideas I have are accurate. I would really love to get a job at a makeup counter, but where I live, the only makeup counter is like Walgreens, so <laughs> I'm not going to get a job at Walgreens. There's also Walmart. I'd rather work at the Walmart makeup counter than the Walgreens makeup counter. Because I just feel like nothing against Walgreens personally. I like them both. But I just feel like locally my Walmart has a better selection. I think my local Walgreens has like higher quality makeup. Or at least some of it's higher quality. But my local Walmart has more variety of makeup. Okay, the next brush I'm going to use is the Scone Small Cream Brush or Creme Brush and this I just got in my Yes Oh Yas box and I'm going to go into the what shade was I going to mask, mask off in the Pure Palette and let's lay this out on the outer corner of the lid. Ooh, that's such a pretty color. I'm loving this. I think I'm going to do a fall look, a fall inspired look using this palette. Now I'm going to take this Crystal Scents kind of flat fluffy brush and I'm going to go into this blush in the shade Reveal on the Pure Palette. And let's see, where do I want to put this? Let's put it on the inner corner. Bringing it up into the crease. This is so pretty. It looks like a maple leaf. I really want to get better lighting for filming, but honestly, I'm not a filmographer, so like I don't really know what I'm doing, and I'm too lazy to go like research it. So I'm just thinking, get a bunch of lights, put them everywhere. <laughs> um, I had a friend that suggested a film studio that has like a bunch of like. Uh, different, uh, I think they're called umbrella lights, and it's only like 50 bucks for them. So I have them on my Amazon wish list, but I haven't purchased them yet. That's kind of like a thing that I'm going to do if my YouTube channel really takes off. I'll invest in some good lighting. Okay, just going to 
tap off that brush as much as possible. Wet it off a little bit. And then I'm going to go into disguise. And put that right under the lower lash line. I'm liking this palette. This palette is beautiful. I wasn't too sure about it because the colors didn't really seem cohesive, but I'm getting a pretty cohesive look out of this and it seems really fall appropriate. I'm really surprised. Okay, and now I'm going to test out this um, SL Miss Glam brush that I just got in an Ipsy and this is the L50 brush. And I'm going to go in the Enchantment, uh, I don't know if this is supposed to be a bronzer or a highlighter or a blush, but the Enchantment shade on the face part of the Pure Palette. And just tap that off and then I'm going to put that as like a, trans as like a transition above the crease. Just blending that in and then I'm going to take a little more and put that right in the inner most top part corner of the eye. What is that called? Right there. The bridge of the brow, I guess. Right there. You can see where I'm putting it. Um. <laughs> unless you're blind. Not funny. I might be going blind slowly. My vision is so bad. I'm really hoping it's just like cataracts and I'll be able to get cataract surgery when I'm older and the problem will go away. But, um, I don't think so. I have like astigmatism. I like this brush. This is a nice brush. Okay. And this is looking absolutely stunning. Next I need, ooh, how about this brush? This is a nice brush too. This is, oh, this doesn't have a name on it. There's a really large fluffy brush and it's kind of got a bit of an angle to it and I'm going to go into the Twilight Highlighter shade with that and just pat that on the lid. Oh, so gorgeous. So gorgeous. And then drag it along the brow. And in the inner corner of the eye. I might mess up my make in a, makeup in a little bit here. We'll see. I'm going to test out a product that might mess it up. I'm unsure about this product, but we'll see. Who cares? I'm not going anywhere special. I don't want my eyes to look too, um, dark. I want them to be a little bit brighter. So I'm going to take, this is Sante Big Smoky Eyes. And I don't think I've ever used this before. I got this from uh, Shop Miss A. I feel so sorry for all the like homeless people that have to sleep outside during cold nights like this. It's awful. I was homeless as a teenager and I was homeless during the summertime and that was okay because like it was warm nights I didn't mind being homeless during the summertime but once it started getting 
about this time of year and it started getting cold. I was freezing at night. I knew I had to get out of that lifestyle and get a job and get a home. So that's what I did. I can always empathize with people that are stuck on the street in the cold. When I was living in Maryland, I thought it was so cool because um, I guess I didn't use the City Limits palette. Save that for another day. But I thought it was so cool when I was living in Maryland because there was this huge snowstorm and they reported they did not find any deaths from people freezing in the cold and all the homeless people had places to go in the shelter and it was just really cool um, or at least the city I was living in. I was living in Rockville, Maryland and I just thought that was really awesome you know same thing doesn't happen where I live. Where I live there's usually a few deaths a year from homeless people being out in the cold and it's really sad. Okay, next one. Next thing I'm going to use is this new mascara. I switched out my mascara and this is the IT Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. I've already used this before. I got this in a boxy charm. I already used this before and I really like it. This is probably my third favorite mascara I've ever used. It might grow on me though. It might make it to the top. I don't know though because I really like Tarte. Oh, I forgot to do my wing eyeliner. I guess I'll do mascara before I do the eyeliner. My cat probably thinks I'm insane for talking to myself. I'm just sitting here putting on makeup and talking to myself. It's probably like, oh no, mom's going crazy again. Look at that. They make them it's so long. So long. They are kind of like spider webby lashes, but I like them. I've always kind of liked spider web lashes. It's the goth of me. Oh, by the way, on my DNA test, I'm like 0.20% goth <laughs> and I'm 0.80% gay. <laughs> I don't, I don't think I'm, I'm probably like, I'm probably a good even amount bisexual. Probably not more into females than males or males to females. I've dated more males, but um, maybe just because it's a little more socially acceptable and um, it can be awkward dating a female. Um, but then again, I've never dated a lesbian. I've only dated bisexual women, so it'd probably be different if I dated a lesbian. Probably the longest relationship I've ever had was with someone that was more lesbian than straight. <laughs> if that makes sense. She was bisexual, but she was more lesbian than straight. Okay, so the eyeliner that I'm going to test out is this one that I got in last month's Boxy Charm. This is Butter London's Stroke of Wow. And let's see. This is one of the ones that has the wheel. Let's see if I can control this very well. It seems to be working fine. I like how precise it is. Look at that. Such a nice thin line. That's actually really nice. Now comes the fun part, doing the wing. Okay, so I just tried that wing liner, and sorry, my memory card got full, so I had to delete some 
video files off of it, but that wing eyeliner actually worked great. Or the butter liner, liner looked great. Look at that. It's awesome. It was so finely pointed and accurate, but I'm actually pretty impressed. It was really easy for me to use, but that was using my right hand. Let's see if my left... Wait. I'm going to use my right hand to apply anyways, but let's see if that was on my right side. Let's see if I can do it on the left side just as well. But I like it so far. I like it actually better than felt tip liner. So far it seems pretty... I mean, normally I can't get such a thin, precise line. I might have found a new holy grail. Okay, let's... Let's try and do this side. This is a little more challenging. Ah! Oh, it's burning my eye. It got in my eye. Okay, the burning sensation is leaving now. Okay, this line is not as thin and precise as the other line. That's okay, we can always make the other line a little thicker. It's like it's less opaque on this side than the other side. Maybe I need to shake it. Let's see. Yeah, that sounds like there's a ball in there, so it probably needs to be shaped. Yeah, that definitely helped. I always struggle with this eye. Ah! Uh, if I was doing this on another person though, I could see this totally working better than a felt liner. Really, this is awesome. I love it. Cute. I like it. I think that turned out so well. Um, I'm really impressed with this. I know a lot of other people were intimidated by it, but I was really excited to try it actually, and I'm impressed. So. That's cool. Look at You know what this needs? More glitter. This BYS glitter cream palette. And I'm gonna use ooh. First I'm gonna use this like coral orange glitter and tap that on the little brow bone there. Ooh, pretty. Might put a little on the lid right there too. And I actually really love this BYS glitter. I really like the brand BYS actually. I've I think they're good quality for how inexpensive they are. They're like the wet and wild of Australia. I love them. And then I'm going to go into the gold glitter. Yeah, I got this at um, Grocery Outlet, which is like a discount store where I live. Ooh, that's so pretty. And I just love it so much. I'll show you the other two new BYS palettes I got. I haven't used them yet, but I'll show them to you. I have four BYS palettes now. Well, not including this glitter palette. And then I think I have... I think I have... I'll show you all my BYS palettes. Let's just do that. Let's just do a BYS palette show off. So I have this glitter palette and it says Glitter Eye Creme. I have this BYS eyeshadow palette. This is Smoking Shades. 
and this is beautiful. I haven't really used this much, but it's absolutely beautiful, excellent quality. I've used hmm, mostly the purples and this white, a little bit of the blues and that black. And then I have four of these BYS tins. The first two I got were these two and this one I've used. This is the berries and this is um, a dupe for the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette. I love all of these. They're all really good. And then these three I haven't had a chance to use yet, but they're all really good. I swatched them and they all seem to be really good. The, what I notice is they're kind of powdery, but they blend really nicely. They layer really nicely. This is the peach palette and it is like a knockoff of the sweet peach palette. And it's so beautiful. Look at those colors. I feel like peach really suits my eye color. Then we have the metals palette, which I just got this month. I got this at Ross. Uh, what I don't like about this is there's not really any matte shades. Maybe this is a matte shade, but everything else really seems shimmery. Um, so you got to reach for other palettes. It seems like it's going to be pretty decent. And then there's this nude palette, which is probably Urban Decay knockoff. And it is just beautiful. Um, nice cool tone palette with a little war pop of warmth right there. And I'm excited to try it. This one's really beautiful. He heels off. That is a beautiful color. So is Smoke Machine. I wasn't done with that Pure palette. I have to do my cheeks. Might use this Naked Cosmetics uh, highlighter palette too. I think this shade would complement my look, or the green here would complement my look. I think I want to go in with this dark um, color reveal on the cheeks, and I'm going to use my Lisa Frank. Um, blush brush I was a little concerned that this might be too dark for me but I don't think it is I think it seems to be working just fine that's the good thing about being a medium skin tone is most makeup suits your skin tone every once in a while stuff will be too light or too dark but most of the time everything suits your skin tone. Especially if you're um, a neutral, which I'm a neutral. I want to do a little on the nose. I've really been liking that lately. A little blush on the nose. And just to make it look like you got a sun kiss. I saw a really cool picture of a makeup artist that did that and I really liked it. I don't know who the makeup artist was, it's just some picture people were sharing on Facebook and I really like Kind of use a blush like a bronzer. This blush seems really buildable. Might be a tad bit patchy though. I don't know if it's the brush or the blush, but it seems to be going on a little bit patchy. I'm kind of just using it like a bronzer to add color to the parts of my face that the sun would hit. And before we go any further, I want to put on some contour. Do some contouring. I just got this um, the Balm Bronzer and Thomas 
and I'm going to try using that to sculpt my cheeks. I will use this unicorn sculpting brush. You know, I really like these unicorn brushes that my friend gave me. They seem to work really well. One of them, the bristles did fall out, but I just glued them back in with some E6000, and that worked just fine. This is a really fair bronzer. Barely does anything. It looks a lot darker than it really is. I guess if you want a subtle look, then it's okay. What I like about these unicorn brushes is they just feel like so uh, easy to handle. They just like are so comfortable to hold. I like the handles. I think I'm going to use both um, this like peachy brown that shines blue and this um, green highlight here. And I'm going to use this Luxie Tapered Highlighter. And first I'm going to go into the brown. Ooh, that's pretty. I'm not going to put too much on the nose. And I really want to concentrate this green, so I'm really packing it on my brush. And pulling it across the cheekbones. Ooh. Ooh. It looks like reptilian skin. Heather is not plain. It is iridescent. Okay, I think I'm gonna try this out. I don't think I've ever used this before. And this is the Revlon Venus Glow. I've swatched it, but I don't think I've ever used it. I might be wrong. And I'm going to put that on the cheeks and just kind of blend it in. Pat in. Now I'm going to take my uh, Jeffree Star Ooh, no tea, no shade. I just got this. This is my first Jeffree Star liquid lip. And oh my god, I love it. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, I love it. So smooth. And blendable, too. I used this as liquid liner last time I used it. It worked so good. I'm going to use this pretty vulgar, my lips are sealed, liquid lip. Let's try the Sally Hansen Satin Effects Lip Gloss in Sexy. So here's the final look. I'm happy with it. It's very fall appropriate. It is fun testing out these new products. <laughs> Alright, thanks for watching. Have a nice night. Bye.